All right, we're talking about Disney World's cheapest hotels. You hear that? It's your wallet thanking you. Let's find out if affordability also means a sacrifice of quality here on DFB Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog, and today you're all honorary all-stars. Just kidding, you're all-stars every day. But even more so right now, since we'll be talking about Disney's cluster of all-star resorts. If you've been following along with our reviewing every Disney World Hotel series, and you've already seen a ton of solid competitors step up to the plate, competing for the chance to win you over. But the all-star resorts become a worthy competitor, even among Disney's fanciest hotels, simply because of their price tag. And also a couple of other secrets we're going to talk about. So here's the big question for today. Does cheap really mean cheap? Like bad cheap? You feel? Or are these resorts more than you bargained for? Let's start by talking about what you can expect to find at these hotels, which include characters you're not going to meet anywhere else on property. There are three hotels that make up the Disney All-Star Triad, All-Star Music, All-Star Sports, and All-Star Movies. Each one of these hotels is considered a value resort, which translates to the most basic and least expensive tier of hotels available at Disney World. For the most part, you get what you pay for, so you can expect basic amenities compared to Disney's more upscale resorts. Now, the vibes of the All-Stars are fun. They might get a bad rap for being kind of cheesy for those larger-than-life decorations, wacky patterns, and in-your-face themes, but honestly, kids are going to love them way more than any uppity hotel stay. If you're looking to stay somewhere that feels very Disney, these are very Disney. Each of these resorts is seriously committed to their individual theming. All-Star Movies aims to make you feel immersed in Disney classic films, not quite as much as Disney's Art of Animation Resort, but it definitely falls into the same category. Category, literally. To tell you the truth, kids might not recognize some of the movies featured here, though. You've got characters from The Love Bug, hey Herbie, The Mighty Ducks, Fantasia, with that creepy resident Jack in the Box that was certainly a choice, 101 Dalmatians, and Toy Story. Okay, kids know Toy Story, but if your child could name five characters from The Mighty Ducks, I'd be seriously impressed. All Star Music highlights different genres of music around each of its guest buildings. What's on the playlist? We'll take your pick of xylophones and bongos over at Calypso, saxophones and drum sets at Jazz, jukebox and electric guitars at Rock, and literally the largest pair of cowboy boots at country. If there's a snake in those boots, I'm getting out of Dodge. And over in the Broadway section, you'll be taken to the streets of New York with marquees representing classic Disney shows on Broadway, like Mary Poppins, The Lion King, and Newsies. For all you sporty folks out there, All-Star Sports highlights some of the more popular games, like football in the touchdown building, tennis in the center court, baseball in the home run hotel, featuring Coca-Cola cups that make a 7-Eleven Big Gulp look like a teeny tiny sip, surfing at the Surf's Up spot, and basketball at the Hoops Hotel. Like I said, these resorts are fun. They're vibrant and borderline chaotic and have an energy that makes them very family friendly. But in turn, they're also great for big school groups. But I guess we can cross that bridge later in the video. For now, let's talk money and find out what value really means at Disney. Across the all-star resorts, price points aren't too terribly different, with one major exception. Each of the standard rooms has two queen-size beds, with one of those beds being a pull-down from the wall, meaning you can sleep up to four guests here. These standard rooms cost between $150 and $230 per night. Now, what do you think? Are these rooms still worthy of their value title? Let me know in the comments. If you opt for a preferred room, you'll likely pay between 180 and 250 per night. These rooms are a bit more expensive because they'll put you closer to all of the hotel's amenities, like the lobby, the dining area, the main pool, and the bus stop. But let's spend some extra time over at All-Star Music because All-Star Music has suites. Remember that exception I just mentioned? This is it, this is the exception. Aside from Disney's Art of Animation Resort, suites really aren't a thing at the value hotels. But All-Star Music couldn't let Art of Animation have all the fun. The All-Star Music family suites in the Calypso and Jazz sections can sleep up to six guests and include a master bedroom, a living room slash sleeping area, a kitchenette, and two full bathrooms. Yep two full bathrooms. They also have three queen beds, with two of those being pull-downs from the wall. You can expect to pay between $300 and $580 per night for one of these suites, which is a pretty sweet deal compared to the similar style suites over at Art of Animation that cost significantly more, stacking up between $430 to $830 per night. Now, I don't know about you, but that doesn't sound very valued to me. 
That price difference is pretty substantial when you compare the amenities of the rooms, but when it comes to art of animation, you're basically paying a higher price to have the Skyliner access versus the singular transportation option, you'll find at All-Star Music. More on that later. Another big reason art of animation rooms tend to cost more than the All-Star rooms is because of their epic character-inspired room themes. So how do the All-Star rooms fight back? Can they win you over with their certain charm or will Art of Animation still pull ahead, steeper price tag and all? Let's talk about the rooms. When you stay at one of Disney's value resorts, expect the bare necessities to forget about your worries and your strife, right, Baloo? But seriously, if you plan on using your hotel primarily as a place to sleep, maybe grab a quick bite to eat, take a dip in the pool, all while spending most of your time playing around in the theme parks, then the all-star resorts will basically have everything you need to have a successful resort stay. The rooms aren't very big, but have a decent amount of space for storage for your luggage and laundry. They have a split bathroom, keeping the sink and vanity area separate from the shower and toilet area, which really helps when multiple people are trying to get ready at the same time. And the added sliding door helps separate the whole bathroom area from the bed area for extra privacy within a limited amount of space. There's also a mini fridge with a coffee maker station for your morning Joffrey's coffee routine. And the pull-down bed doubles as a table with chairs in case you don't want to get your banana nut muffin crumbs in your sheets while you're quickly scarfing it down before heading out the door. You know how the exterior of the resorts are bursting with characters and theming? Well, the rooms themselves are actually kind of lacking in that department. The majority of the rooms were refurbished in recent years to get a more contemporary makeover. Disney plans to also refurbish the rooms at All-Star Sports, but this project has yet to be completed, just an FYI. The rooms are nice, but there's not much that's Disney about them besides a cute headboard of some of the Fab Five characters above the beds. But if you're missing all the extra pizzazz, just pull back your curtain or walk on outside because there will definitely be pizzazz out there. Want to see all the larger than life statues up close and in person? Then you're going to have to know where to find them. So let's talk about location. Two things for this section that we're going to want to discuss. A, where are the resorts located? And B, which rooms are the best rooms for each hotel? The Three Musketeers of Value Resorts live at the Little All-Star Village in the Animal Kingdom Resort area. Sorry, hope that didn't get your hopes up. This isn't close close to Animal Kingdom, as in you'll be able to see the Animal Kingdom wildlife from outside your window like you would at Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge. This is just the theme park you'll be closest to. The next closest park is Epcot and Hollywood Studios, which are about a 10 minute bus ride away. Magic Kingdom is the furthest and it'll take you about 15 minutes or so to get there, which does not include bus stop wait times. So what rooms are the best rooms here? Depends on what you're searching for. At All Star Sports, the Surf's Up section is going to put you closest to the Stadium Hall lobby and food court, the bus stop, and the main pool. But if you're looking for a less crowded pool option, there's another smaller pool close to the Home Run Hotel. We'll talk more about the pools, so hang tight. Though being closer to all the resort conveniences means fewer steps you have to take to and from your room to reach them each day, it also means you're going to be sleeping close to all the action, so this section of the resort can get pretty noisy. If you'd rather choose a quieter area away from all the hustle and bustle, the Hoops Hotel or Center Court are less hectic options, though you will have to walk quite a bit more to reach the lobby and bus stop each day, which can be exhausting after a full day in the parks where you've already walked all day long. At All Star Music, the Calypso section is going to give you that easy access to the lobby and feature pool, but the rooms that are by far and away the furthest from anything are going to be located in the Country Fair section. You know the lyrics, these boots are made for walking, that comes true here. And at All Star Movies, the Fantasia buildings are the preferred sections here. The Mighty Ducks section and Love Bug section will both put you further away from the action, but Mighty Ducks does have a nearby pool and the Love Bug section has Herbie, so you know, a toss up. And it's too bad Herbie can't give you a lift to the parks because now you're going to have to find your own way to get around. Let's talk transportation. The fact that the All-Star Resort's only means of complimentary transportation are by bus and bus alone can be both a great thing for you or the worst thing ever. First off, there's only one bus stop at each resort and it's right there in front of the lobby, not hiding away in the slightest. If you're staying in one of the preferred rooms, these bus stops will be very convenient, just to hop, skip, and jump away. Though there's just one bus stop at each resort, the bus you board may make additional stops at the other All-Star Resorts during the day when there aren't as many people going to and from. Gotta optimize that bus space, you know? 
But otherwise, you don't really have to worry about an internal bus loop at these resorts like you do at Disney's Caribbean Beach or Coronado Springs, which end up becoming a major time suck since they have to stop at multiple bus stops around the entire perimeter of the resorts. At the end of the night, Disney is normally pretty good about sending lots of buses to the parks to pick up all-star guests because of the massive number of people these resorts can accommodate. Each resort has nearly 2,000 rooms, not exaggerating. So yeah, when fireworks are over and parks are emptying out, you can definitely expect to see large crowds waiting at your bus hub. Another thing to keep in mind is that value resorts are popular for big groups, like school bands and sports teams. So if your resort is hosting a huge group of kids and they're traveling from park to park all together, you might find yourself watching them fill up an entire bus all on their own, meaning you'll be forced to catch the next bus, which could take another 10 to 20 minutes, depending on the time of day. So transportation, room decor, prices, what's next? I'm just pulling your leg. Of course it's food. I'd never forget about the food. Remember what I said earlier about getting the bare necessities when you stay at an all-star resort? That rings true when it comes to food too. Each hotel has just one quick service option and one pool bar. The quick service restaurants or fast food restaurants at each of the resorts are set up like food courts with various stations offering different kinds of options that are rotated out during the day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You're gonna find options like breakfast sandwiches and platters, pizza and pastas, sandwiches and burgers, salads, roasted turkey, and a grab and go section for snacks, drinks, and desserts. Though the options aren't outstanding by any means, there will be something for everyone, even the pickiest of eaters. At All Star Movies, you can check out the world premiere food court. This place used to be known for the coolest secret menu options around, which you could access via an old school Viewmaster, but we haven't seen that return since the 2020 park and hotel closures. If you're just looking for a drink, however, the pool bar at this resort is the Silver Screen Spirits Pool Bar, which features your basic poolside cocktails and spirits. The other two resorts follow the same suit with one food court and one pool bar. All Star Music has the Intermission Food Court and Singing Spirits Pool Bar, and All Star Sports has the End Zone Food Court and Grandstand Spirits Pool Bar. Though these might not be five-star restaurants, they are convenient, especially for late-night dining. Now, you might already know how much I love my resort break days, so can the All-Star Resorts also provide a full day of entertainment outside the parks? Let's talk recreation. Many times the reason guests choose to stay at a value resort over the moderates or deluxes is one big reason. They want to invest more time and money in the parks and less time and money on a resort stay. So as entertaining as the decor is around the All-Stars, they're not necessarily places where ample activities are happening at all hours throughout the day. That being said, that doesn't mean there aren't any activities happening. Every all-star resort offers movies under the stars where you can catch a different Disney movie for free each night. It's a super fun way to unwind at the end of the day, though it can still get a little rambunctious for a movie watching party. Lots of kids will be running around, so don't expect a super quiet film watching situation. And if you're interested in keeping up with your daily run, even while on vacation, there's a jogging trail you can hit up around the hotels. For kids, each resort has a playground, arcade, and kiddie pool, but there are more than just kiddie pools, of course. Each resort has multiple pools. All Star Sports has a surfboard bay pool surrounded by three-story surfboards, probably made for giants to catch totally gnarly waves, and the Grand Slam pool, which is shaped like a baseball diamond. All Star Music has the guitar-shaped Calypso pool, where you'll also find the lovely three caballeros, along with the piano pool. Guess the shape of that one. Go on, guess. All Star Movies has the Fantasia pool with a Sorcerer Mickey fountain and the Duck Pond pool that resembles a hockey rink. Each resort also has a store for souvenirs and sundries, including sport goofy gifts and sundries at All Star Sports, Maestro Mickey's at All Star Music, and Donald's Double Feature at All Star Movies. Now, if you're one of those travel groups who's totally gonna spend as much of your time in the parks as possible, then you're gonna wanna focus in on what I'm about to tell you. If you're staying at any Disney World Resort, Value, Moderate, or Deluxe, you'll have access to the early theme park entry benefit, which lets resort guests enter any of the four parks on any day 30 minutes before they open for the rest of the public. So if you plan on using your resort stay to help you maximize your time in the parks, that's a surefire way to do just that. All right, now here's the moment of truth. Is a stay at one of Disney's all-star resorts going to be the best decision for you to make for your upcoming trip? Or are you better off getting your game on someplace else? 
Well, let's look at pros and cons. It's the best decision for you if you want to save money on your Disney Resort stay. The main benefit of staying at the All-Stars is to save money. Unfortunately, it's become commonplace to pay more than $400 a night to stay at an on-property Disney World Resort. So if there's a chance you can spend less than $250, you're definitely saving quite a bit of money in comparison. It's all relative on Disney property. Now, maybe you want a family suite for less. So if you're traveling with a bigger group and need some extra space but don't want to drop loads of money for it, the family suites at Disney's All-Star Music are a hidden gem. They are beautiful and they have just been renovated. So especially when you consider that they can be hundreds of dollars cheaper than the family value suites over at Disney's Art of Animation, great deal. Also, if you're traveling with kids, the all-star resorts are definitely family friendly. They've got lots of colorful characters, multiple pool options, and food courts that cater to eaters of all sorts. Even though the rooms themselves are pretty basic, kids are going to enjoy ooing and aahing over the different oversized statues and familiar or not so familiar faces greeting them around the resorts. Plus, this is a perfect segue to introduce them to some of your childhood favorite films because this generation needs to carry on Herbie's legacy. So when would it make sense for you to not stay at these hotels? Hotels. Well, keep searching if you want more than the bare necessities. There are other resorts on Disney property that offer a lot more. Multiple restaurants, spa services, unique outdoor activities, fitness centers. So if you feel like staying at a resort that's only going to give you the bare necessities will give you a sense of resort FOMO, then maybe splurging for more amenities is something you want to save up for. Just keep in mind, even if you aren't thrilled with the food court options at the All-Star Resorts, you can still make reservations for other resort restaurants anywhere. You may also want to be closer to the parks. If the kids or you need a midday break for a nap, the distance from these resorts to the parks might add an unwanted amount of transportation time to your day. And speaking of transportation, the lack of multiple transportation options available at the All-Star Hotels may be disappointing and frustrating for you, especially when you consider the large amount of people the All-Star Resorts accommodate. Disney's Art of Animation and Pop Century Resort are also value resorts that have direct access to Disney's Skyliner, which will make it easier for you to transfer over to Epcot and Hollywood Studios and come back again in the middle of the day if needed. But if you want to be really close to Magic Kingdom, you would have to splurge on a stay at one of Disney's deluxe resorts located directly on the monorail, or you can always go camping at Fort Wilderness, where they also have cabins. That's a moderate option. And maybe you're looking for a classier stay. The all-star resorts are fun to look at, but they may not be the most aesthetically pleasing if you're looking for a modern or sleek luxury resort. If you're planning a no kids Disney trip for a honeymoon, a baby moon or anniversary or even bachelorette weekend, then the all-star resorts might clash with the vibe you're going for. There are plenty of other hotels on Disney World property that you can check on instead that'll satisfy the more romantic feel you're aiming for. Of course, the deluxe resorts will be fancy with a capital F, but if you're looking to save some money, a moderate resort stay can be just as classy, especially if you book a room at the Grand Destino Tower at Disney's Coronado Springs. Overall, if you don't spend that much time at your hotel and prefer to maximize your time in the parks, then you'll probably do just fine with an all-star stay. Though they may be lacking in amenities, you're still getting access to several Disney Resort guest perks like early theme park entry and early Genie Plus booking. And you might get to meet Herbie. I see no downside with that. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. If you stayed at the all-star resorts, I'm sure the rest of our viewers would love to hear your experiences. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. Don't forget to go check out our other resort reviews here on DFB Guide. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Vlog, and we'll see you real soon.